Hey friends, welcome to part two of the Superior Limb Osteology videos. And today we'll be going over the landmarks of three bones, the humerus, the ulna, and the radius. This video should be pretty straightforward and not as long as my previous videos, which hopefully will be better for you guys for studying purposes. So starting off with the humerus. On the proximal, proximal most part of the humerus, we have the head of the humerus. And it's this kind of roundish portion, okay? So this is head of the humerus. Remember to pair it back to the bone, okay? Just distal, just right distal to the, the head of the humerus, we have this narrowing, okay? This narrowing, where all these dots are, that's going to be called the anatomical neck of the humerus. Of the humerus, okay? Now, remember, narrowings... And bones typically means that it's going to be a neck, okay? Now, we have two narrowings. We have the anatomical neck, and we have one right here. And you can see how it's getting thinner from this large um, proximal end of the bone, okay? This is going to be called the surgical neck of the humerus. Now, you may be asking, why is this called the surgical neck? Well, when people fracture their humerus... Um, usually it occurs in this region right here. So a lot of surgeries performed here to repair the humerus. So they've named it the surgical neck of the humerus. Okay. We also have the body of the humerus. And then down here, this region is going to be called the condyle of the humerus. Now, there's one more landmark that I want to mention before I zoom in into um, the humerus a little closer. Right here on the lateral aspect, lateral proximal aspect of the humerus, there's a roughened region. And you can feel this if you're studying off of models or real bones. This roughened patch on the lateral proximal part of the humerus is going to be called your deltoid tuberosity. And it's named that because the deltoidus muscle inserts into this rough patch right here. Okay, so that's going to be called the deltoid tuberosity of the humerus. Now we can go ahead and zoom in a little closer. Again, we have the head of the humerus right here. We have our anatomical neck. of the humerus and we have our surgical neck good right here you see this large bump okay this large bump on the lateral proximal part of the humerus okay this large bump is going to be called the greater tubercle of the humerus when I hear tubercle, I just think bump, okay? It's not always true in all cases, but when I hear, tuber oh, hear bump, I think of a tubercle, okay? So this is the greater tubercle of the humerus. And we have a smaller one that's projecting anteriorly right here. And this is going to be called the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Lesser because it is smaller, okay? And together, they form this groove between them. This groove found both, found between both tubercles is going to be called the intertubercular groove of the humerus. All one word, intertubercular groove. Well, this word right here is one word. Intertubercular, then groove of the humerus. Inter meaning between the tubercles and it forms a groove. Okay, intertubercular groove of the humerus. And lastly, again, this roughened patch right here that you can feel on models or real bones on the lateral part of the humerus is your deltoid tuberosity. And that's where the deltoidus muscle inserts into. Cool. Now we can go ahead and zoom into the distalmost part of the humerus. Again, right here, we have the condyle of the humerus condyle okay now there are specific landmarks on the condyle itself 
and they are right here and right here. Okay, this circular one kind of looks like a small head. Remember, the head of the radius is kind of circular roundish itself. So this little head is going to be called the capitulum of the humeral condyle. And capitulum means little head. You can see the word caput, right? So capitulum means little head of the humeral condyle. Right here, the second landmark on the humeral condyle is going to be called the trochlea of the humeral condyle. Okay, humeral condyle. I'm just going to put C for short. Now, above the condyle, just proximal to it, we have this landmark here and this landmark over here. Now, epi means upon. So this is upon the condyle. So we're going to make this the lateral epicondyle of the humerus, which means this one over here is the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Okay? Now, Right here, we have two depressions, one depression here and one depression here. This depression right here is going to be called the coronoid fossa. And I'll explain why it's called coronoid, but just for now, know that this is the coronoid fossa of the humerus. Right here, this depression is going to be called the radial fossa of the humerus. Okay, now we have one more landmark on the anterior distal part of the of the humerus, and it's the, right here. We have this crest, and this is going to be called the lateral because it's on the lateral side. Supra condylar crest of the humerus, meaning on the lateral part of the humerus, just superior to the condyle, we have a crest, okay? So this is the lateral supracondylar crest of the humerus. Now we can go ahead and move on to the posterior aspect of the distal part of the humerus. Again, we can quickly review some of the landmarks that we can see both on the anterior aspect and the posterior aspect. We have right here the medial epicondyle of the humerus. Right here we have the lateral one, lateral epicondyle. And right here we can see the trochlea of the humeral condyle of humeral condyle. Okay, now we have a large depression back here, which is quite easy to see, and this is going to be called the olecranon fossa of the humerus. And when we go over the ulna, I'll explain why it's called the olecranon fossa of the humerus. But for now, just know it as the olecranon fossa of the humerus, okay? Now that is all of the landmarks found on the humerus. Pretty easy. Now we can go ahead and move on to the ulna now. The ulna is unique because the head of the ulna is located on the distal end of the bone. So this right here is the head of the ulna. Again, we have a body of the ulna. And then we have some unique landmarks up on this end, but we'll go over those when we zoom in. But first, I want to point out this ridge. There's a ridge right here. And when you study off of real models or bones, you'll see this ridge right here. And it's on the lateral aspect of the body of the ulna. And this is going to be called the interosseous 
border of the ulna. Inter meaning between, osseous mean bony. So this is the border between two bones, between the radius and the ulna. Okay, now let's go ahead and zoom in to the proximal part of the ulna. So when I look at the proximal end of the ulna, the first thing that catches my eye are these two projections. We have this one right here popping out, all this popping out right here, and then we have this little one right here. Okay, this larger one is going to be called the olecranon of the ulna. Now that hopefully makes sense now. This is the olecranon of the ulna, and when the elbow joint extends, the olecranon of the ulna goes into the olecranon fossa of the humerus. And if that doesn't make sense now, I have another image that I'll show later that hopefully will make it more clear. Now this projection right here is going to be called the coronoid process. Remember, process means something that sticks out or sticky outy. Okay, this coronoid process is going to be what goes into the coronoid fossa of the humerus. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now, coronoid means beak-like, or or bird's beak, because it kind of is like pointed like a bird's beak. Hope maybe that will help you remember it. Maybe not. Okay. Now we right here we have a notch. Okay. And this notch right here reminds me of like an ice cream scooper. It's kind of shaped that way. This notch is going to be called the trochlear notch of the ulna. Because it's the notch that goes around the trochlea of the humeral condyle. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So this is the trochlear notch of the ulna. We have a second notch found right here. And on a model or a real bone, it'll be easier to see and you can even feel it. This notch right here is where the head of the radius sits. So we're going to call this the radial notch. Okay. And those are all the landmarks found on the proximal aspect of the ulna. Now we can move our way down to the distal aspect. Again, this is going to be the head of the ulna. But right here we have this kind of pointy thing. And if you hold the ulna like you would a pencil, it would kind of feel like this is a stylus. So we're going to call this the styloid process of the ulna. And that's it. Those are all of the landmarks found on the ulna. Now we can go ahead and move on to the radius. This is the radius in its entirety. On the proximal end, we have the head of the radius. And we also have a narrowing right here. This narrowing is going to be called the neck of the radius. Again, we have the body of the radius, and then we have this border right here on the medial aspect of the body of the radius. And this is going to be called the interosseous border of the radius. Again, meaning the bony border between two bones, okay? Interosseous border. Now we have some landmarks down in the distal end, but I'm going to cover those when we come up on a image that kind of zooms in on that. Okay, but for now, let's go into the proximal end of the radius. The proximal end of the radius has the head of the radius. Okay, head. We have the neck. And then we have this rough patch right here. And if we remember what we called the last rough patch, it was called a tuberosity. This is going to be called the radial tuberosity because it's the tuberosity found on the radius. Perfect. And that's all the um, landmarks that we need to know on the proximal end of the radius. Now we can go ahead onto the distal end. On the distal end, we have another stylus looking projection at the distal end of it. So we're going to call this the styloid process of the radius. We have a notch where the ulna fits into, so we're going to call this the ulnar notch of the radius. 
Now, right here we have a surface. And this surface articulates with carpal bones. So we're going to call it the carpal articular surface of the radius. And that is all the landmarks that we need to know for the radius. Quite simple. In fact, that's all the landmarks we need to know for all the humerus, the ulna, and the radius. Now, these images right here to help kind of clarify some um, uh, misconceptions. So earlier we learned that this depression right here is called the coronoid fossa of the humerus. That's because this pr process right here is the coronoid process. So when the elbow joint, there's flexion of the elbow joint, this process goes into that depression. And same thing for this depression right here. The radial fossa is where the head of the radius goes into when there's flexion of the elbow joint. We go to the distal aspect, no, posterior aspect of the, um, of the elbow joint. Again, we can see the olecranon of the ulna right here. And it's sitting within this depression on the humerus, which is the olecranon um, fossa of the humerus. Okay, hope that makes more sense. In this image, I'm hoping to illustrate that right here, you can see the ulnar notch of the radius, and so you can see the head of the ulna sitting in this notch. Okay, you have the styloid process of the radius. As well as you can see these carpal bones. And you can see how this bottom surface of the radius articulates with some of those bones. Again, being the carpal articular surface of the radius. Okay, and that's it. That concludes this video. I hope it made sense and it was helpful. And I'll see you next time.